Hello and welcome back. So let's do some final touches with our framework so that we have a complete running framework here. And uh, let's continue. So load your, your items here and let's finish up. So one thing we will need to do is to be able to run a database. But before we do that, let's be able to load views in the first place. So what I'll do is in the core folder here, because this is, this is going to be one of the core uh, files, I'll right click and create a new file. So I'll save this file as a uh, controller. Okay, so controller.php and save it there. So this is going to be our main controller. All these controllers in here will be children of this main one. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's say class, okay? Controller class. We'll call this one the main controller class. Okay, so the main controller class. And here it, um, it's going to be called controller with a capital C and it won't extend anything. So let's leave it at that. And um, hmm, let's see, we don't need a constructor function for this at all. Mm -hmm. So now you may be asking yourself, why are we making this main controller when we have controllers over here, right? Now, the thing is this, the way uh, OOP works, and that's why what makes it efficient is this. If, for example, I have this home uh, class here. There's some functionality here I will have that may be common to all controllers. So maybe a controller always needs to load a view, which every controller might need to do. Not everyone, but most of them will need to do. So when a controller runs, eventually it will need to load a view so that the user can see something, right? That functionality is common to all controllers. Now, instead of me creating a function in every single controller, uh, that will do that, that would be a problem because if later I need to change how that function works, I'll have to go through every single controller and change it. But to avoid that, we'll put it in one single controller and then extend that controller's functionality to every other controller. That way, if I need to change how the view function works, I'll change it from the main controller and it will change how every single controller works. So efficiency, right? So here we'll say class controller, and in here we'll give it a function called view. Like this. So this view is just going to look for a view file and load it. Simple and straightforward. So I'm just going to do this and say, um, I'll say file name. Like that. Okay. Or just call it, let's just call it view a view right the view name mm -hmm. okay so here all we need to do is to check if a file exists of that kind so if file exists and we'll use the file name and then we just require that file actually do we require the file yes we require the file mm -hmm. so it depends what you want you can use require or load, but since it exists, let's just require it, yeah? At this point, we know it exists, so no problem. But let's define the file name, shall we? Because what I want is not, when I'm looking for a view, I don't want to have to type the whole view path. No, I just want to type the file name or just part of the file name. That way it makes things easier for coding, right? then this thing should know on its own where to look. So in this case, I want it to look in the views folder. So how do we get to the views folder? Let's imagine we are from the index file. We'll go uh, folder up and then we'll go to app and views. And then in there, we can search for it. So there, there's going to be the view file. Now, I want every view file to have a dot view at the end so that we know this is a view file. So I'll say dot view dot PHP. Okay. So the view name, and then it will have a dot view and then dot 
.php. So that this is the actual file where we can find it. Now, if we can't find this file, you can decide what to do here. And my resolution is to just echo out the message. Um, could not find view file and then just tell me what the view file path is that I'm trying to look for. As simple as that. Okay, that way I can fix the problem. All right, so that's the function that a controller should have. So any functionality that you want all the controllers to have, put it here. And then you can now use that function as if it were right there in the home page. So if I go to the home page now, you see, I don't want to echo anything in the controller. Nothing should ever be echoed in the controller at all. Instead, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to say this like this, because this in this case represents this uh, class right now. So I'm going to say this view like that, and then tell it what view file I want to look for. So here I want to look for the home view file like that. Okay, so let's see what problems we're going to have because we will have problems here once I try to load this. So let's refresh and let's go through the errors. So it says there's a fatal error. Uncode error, call to undefined method home view. So what it's saying here is that home, this dot dot means the next thing here is a function in the home class. So this means this is a class and that's a function. Now it's saying you're trying to call an, an undefined method, meaning that method or a function does not exist, this view method. But wait a minute, if we go back here, it's true. There is no such function here, right? Yes, but there's that function in the controller. It's right there. By the way, let me use public here because we will be calling this from the outside. So how can we make use of this function even though it's not in the home thingy? So what we'll do is we'll say extends controller. So what this does is now I'm extending controller class. So whenever you extend a, another class, it means you're getting whatever functions are in that class, it's as good as putting them in here without actually having to put them in here. So it's like, it's like the include, like this require and include. The way we include other files within other files, we are simply telling it to include all the functions from controller as if they were in here before running this. So now this is a usable thing. So let's see, the error should change now. It shouldn't complain that the method doesn't exist anymore. We'll have a different error. So there's a fatal error now. It's saying the class controller not found. Oopsie. So that class is not found that we are trying to extend. Well, whose fault is it that it's not found? Well, it's the init fault because it's supposed to include everything that is inside the core folder. So where exactly should we include this? Now you have to think about it. Do you want to use functions in that controller? And the answer might be yes. Do you want to use the database inside that controller? The answer might be yes. So put it after all of these guys. So say controller.php. Now my controller file has a small letter here. That's why I'm doing that. So that's important. Now that we've done that, we've included the file, we should have a different error now. Okay, so that error is now could not find the view file app views, but at least things are working, right? So let's create that view. So inside the views folder, let me create a new file and I'm going to say h1 welcome to the home page. And let's close that h1 tag. And let's save that. Inside the views, we'll save it as home, small letters, dot views, dot PHP. Now, not views, but view. It's a single view, right? Let's save it. Let's go to control and make sure it's looking for single view, which is true. That's fine. So if I now refresh, you see, welcome to the home page. We've loaded a view. Very nice. Very nice. So if I go to the home, now imagine I have a variable here. So this variable is var is equal to 
this is my variable. So let's say we do all the calculations we need here in the index, and then we have a variable here that I want to echo in my home view. Now, this variable is called var. Now, if I come to my home view page and I do this, let me change this to an H5, and then I just try to echo. That's how you echo in PHP, the shortcut. This is the same as doing PHP echo, but who does this anymore, yeah? Let's just do that. <laughs> okay, so we're trying to echo out this var. So I'm going to boom, and then it tells me warning, undefined variable var. So it's saying it doesn't know what var is. However, var is here, there. Now the reason is that any uh, code that is inside a function is essentially isolated from the outside world. So keep in mind that this view is actually a function, which is in here. So we're including the file from here, which means anything outside here, any variable outside here do not matter. But we can change that by supplying them here, since we can supply variables here. Let's supply data. Let's just call it data as an array. But we will not always need to supply data. So let's make it optional by putting an equal sign and doing that. So this is an empty array. So I'm just saying data is an empty array uh, originally. So that if I do supply some data in form of an array, then it will replace the emptiness with that data. This is just to make sure that we can still use it like this without worrying about anything. So right now I haven't changed anything. I'll get exactly the same. But, but, now I have an array here. Now the problem is, if I go back to home, it means I can put stuff in an array here and put it here. So I can put this as data, like so. And then this one var, instead of sending it, because I'll never know, the reason I'm using an array here is I, I won't know how many uh, variables I'll have here that I'll need to send there. So it would be unrealistic to just keep sending things like that. So it's better we send one variable, which is an array. So I'll put this instead in data and var like this. Okay, so now I have data, which has an array location called var, and then I put that there. That way I can put this data here without a problem, and I can send it to the home. Now let's see if we get anything different. No, we don't. Why? Is because if I go to home now, I'll have to do this and say data var in order to get it, right? And there we see, this is my variable. But you see, this is cumbersome to do. We, we, we don't want to be doing this with every single variable. That's just going to make things worse. So I want to be able to still do this. So what I'll do is I'll go to controller and here I'll tell it to extract whatever is in data. So I'll say extract data. And that's it. So extract, what extract does is it goes through an array and gets all the array items and makes variables with those names. That's what extract does. So if I go here and you see this data contains an, an item called var here, and it means this var will be given a variable name called var and still that same value. So let's come back here and I refresh. Everything is home key dory. So here I will have, let me do this instead. And then put title there. So that's the home page. And then uh, when I go here, I'll say title. Okay, so that's the title of the page. Let me go back here and delete the rest of these. Okay, so now we have a functioning homepage uh, controller and a functioning 404 controller. And uh, what else? Everything seems to be working fine. Okay, so let me close all files. So our 
thing is working well. Oh, wait a minute. Let's do the same thing with, um, let me do this, with the 404. We don't want to echo anything from a controller, like I had said before. So we'll do the that, and then the page title will be 404. Sorry there. And then here we'll load a 404 page. Okay, great. So let's go and add a 404 view here, new file. And now you can decorate this as you wish. So it's a view page 404. Now it goes without saying that I can type any other name here. It doesn't mean that because this is a 404 controller, I should have a 404 view. The view name can be different. As long as you load it there, it will load. So uh, page not found. This way now we have an HTML file that you can put only HTML here and decorate it as you wish. Uh, yeah, we have a controller and that. That's cool. And yes, 404, 404 there and the title. And uh, yes, very good. So in order to complete this framework, uh, the only thing remaining now is the uh, the database. That's all that's remaining, the database connection. And once we have that, we have a working uh, uh, framework.